Yay. Aloha and welcome to Wisdom Dialogue with Hope Johnson coming to you from Hawaiian Paradise Park on the beautiful big island of Hawaii. Yes. Anne is with me today. <laughs> she gives me visual feedback, which is always fun. <laughs> The past never happened. And all pain is in the past. Any pain that you're perceiving right now is from holding on to a thought. That's all it's from. It's not caused by anything else, but holding on to a thought. So it has to be justified in some way. You're having the perception of pain must be justified in your mind in order for you to have that perception. So, you know, there's all this stuff and, you know, the ego always bring up, if my parents only had done this with me or even... Um, if I had only done that with my kids, you know, uh, the past is completely imagined, projected right now. So that kind of thought can only be insanity and it can only lead you to suffering. See, you get the perception that something can go wrong, that something can, uh, can be a problem, that could be a problem. You get a perception that bodies are vulnerable and you believe in it. That's what makes pain seem like a possibility. It seems like you can be in pain, um, especially when it's in your perception. You know, I know I've, uh, I've gone through the uh, sense of childbirth three times. I know what you mean. It seems like it's really real and it seems like there's no escape from it. Um, but it is only being interpreted. Your mind is only interpreting something as pain in the first place. So, you know, when you go into that interpretation, you just allow yourself to get the feeling of it, just the pure pain, because beneath that pain, the pain part where it's a, uh, where, where, you know, you're interpreting it as pain, really, it's right on the surface. You can get a different interpretation of it, and it's really beautiful. It's like ecstasy. You know, pain is always a signal that there is fear in the mind. You know, it doesn't mean you wouldn't pull away, like if something's hot or something like that. You don't have a choice in, the, in those kinds of things. Uh, it's just that when you sense pain, like it seems like it's coming up in your body, um, like Bob Shine was sharing last week, he was having pain when he was going pee, um, just to experience, you know, experience the experience that you're having without trying to make it um, as if it's justified that you have that pain. Now, a lot of people will talk about their diagnosis, for instance. I have this pain because I have such and such. See, and that's another way of justifying it. And I notice people really get defensive about that. Like they want to defend the reason for the pain. Um, you know, people who have the perception of having been abused in childhood when they get the when when they hear the message that the past didn't happen they didn't really do that to you people tend to get really defensive and the thing is those defenses are built up so that you don't see so that you don't see that you're making that up uh, 
And, and that's what keeps the cycle going. That's what keeps that cycle playing out. The cycle can't be broken as long as you're refusing to see what the source of the cycle is in the first place. It'll just manifest in a different way. Some kind of an abuse is going to happen. Um, and you know what? You flip back and forth from lifetime to lifetime, going from different uh, as the abuser, as the victim, as the abuser, as the victim, back and forth all the time. So it's just a, a question of are you willing to see? that you're projecting that and whatever it is it might be some uh some finance uh, uh some finances you know like you like you get the perception of oh my gosh what how am i gonna make it or something like that that's the same as perceiving pain in your body you're perceiving lack um in that moment you're not trusting see in that moment you're not trusting when you perceive it as a problem now, gratitude comes in really handy right here. Gratitude for the pain. Like, you know, uh, if you're like, say you're having, a, you're having pain when you're going pee, like Bob was sharing about last week. Say you're having pain when you're going pee. Just in having gratitude for that pain, it's like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, and, you know, even in thinking in those terms, it just kind of like eases everything up because it eases that resistance to it. Like, I don't want the pain. I want to get rid of the pain. I want this to change. See, you really don't want anything on the surface perception layer to change. You want your perception of it to change. See, when you're thinking in terms that you want your perception to change, what can I do to get my perception to change? That's resisting your perception because what you're trying to do is get things in the perception to change. Now, if you mean it in a different way, if you mean what can I do to change my perception about this, it's kind of like that. So the thing itself doesn't need to change but the way you're looking at it, the way you're taking it, that's what changes. The perspective, the interpretation that you're giving it, that's what changes. And you're so grateful for everyone and everything for exactly the way they are because of the gifts that it's all bringing you, okay? Because of the gifts. Now, I have a friend, I, I, have, I have a friend who posted something on Facebook and it was super juicy i think she might be on with me right now if you're on with me and you want to talk with me about this um just raise your hand i'll be super stoked to talk with you about it i know you said you were going to come on um but i'm not sure what your name is on here so i'm not going to assume uh let's see i made a note of it okay this was really awesome thank you so this uh, beautiful friend of mine posted this. I mean, the first thing I see is her face and her, her just like her beautiful um, expression her lovely aura and I see her face and I'm like, oh, what did she write? You know, I'm like, oh, um, and, here's, and here's what she wrote. My prime focus in life is to help others. And if I can't help them, at least not to promote more pain, hurt. Seems my current relating is surpassed this ideal of helping. I came super close to running his head over with the front wheel of my truck yesterday. So this is fun. He went under to disable the vehicle in a, in a rage, okay? So she's super close to running his head over. That's just the icing on the cake, friends. Most people just tell me I need to get out of this thing let it go, leave it behind. Why do I feel a tremendous love for this man, this man who keeps telling me I need to change? I love that part. We'll get back to it. And how do we allow people to change in our perception? Isn't it instant? Yes, it is. Holding an image of another is false. It's basically promoting the past. 
I am not a victim. I do not oppress others. I am learning how to be truth. Love you. Oh, I love you. That is so cute. I just really appreciate that. So um, the prime, the prime focus in life is to help others. So let's just begin with that. Let's just begin with the prime focus in life is to help others. So there's the way that we look at helping others with the ego, where that means we're giving something up, like we're losing something of ourselves. We're losing something. We're giving something. Aloha, Jill. Aloha, Alkini. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, that's uh that's that's never gonna help anyone if you're if you're giving in a way um where it's like you're losing like you're sacrificing anything that's never gonna help others the, the only thing that helps others is your awakening the healing of of your mind restoring your mind to sanity that's the only thing that helps others so um and the same thing so and and then and then she said and not promote more pain or hurt so the thing is you're either helping or you're basically harming your own mind you can't really harm another person um it, it's just that you, you know you're gonna resonate with people who are into harming themselves and place certain patterns with them because those are the patterns at play that's all um so basically, uh, people who don't recognize how they're hurting themselves play out hurtful patterns with one another. That's all that's ever going on. Okay. Um, well, that's, you know, celebrate that you didn't run his head over because that's, you know, uh, that could be a really interesting perception. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, here's the thing, there's not really an almost like that. Uh, it's kind of like a wake up call where you get the perception that you came super close to running his head over. It's like, whoa, wow, that's like a lot of rage coming up in me in me i mean it's all coming up in me right um even if i get the perception that he went under there to disable the vehicle in a rage you know it's like it's it's kind of funny you just gotta laugh at that you just gotta laugh at that it's like wow you really don't want me to get away <laughs> it must be really important that i stay right here with you <laughs> <laughs> so, and that's just the icing on the cake. So it sounds like there's an intense relating. So whenever there's an intense relating, that's awesome. Cause these intense relatings like this, these are meant to kind of accelerate the learning. That doesn't mean that you should be with them or that you shouldn't be with them. It's, it's neither. You don't have a choice in that. You don't really have a choice in that. Um, it, it's not saying you should or should not be with them. Um, it's just that these in, these intense, tumultuous kind of relationships, they tend to um, be short. You know, anything's possible, but they tend to be short and explosive, and you just learn a lot from each other really fast, and then it falls by the wayside. So once you're and and here's the thing: whoever you find yourself with you're learning maximally with them they're learning from you and you're learning from them basically you're using each other's bodies to teach your own minds and that's from the spirit's perspective from the ego's perspective this is a battleground from the ego's perspective this thing is just a battleground he's doing this to me they're he's, they're doing this and uh, and and uh oh why do i love you so much and you're treating me like shit and all that kind of drama that's just so on the surface and you know what it's so sweet it's just like ah it's like ah i mean and that's the way to be with it too even with yourself you know um playing into as you're playing into the, the drama just like allowing some compassion for yourself like oh that's that's sweet look she thinks she can get something she thinks she can get something by projecting how cute it's adorable um why do i feel this is a great question i just love this question thank you so much why do i feel a tremendous love for this man that keeps telling me i need to change okay so 
it's not a tremendous love for, okay, so love isn't really special like that. Love is like, one, love is one. It's not even like one. Love is one. So it's not like singling people out and like, oh my God, I love you so much. I just have to be with you. That's fear. Okay. Love is like an open hand like this. And it's, it's observing and like humming and things come and they get loved, whatever it is, things, people, whatever it is, it gets loved. That being drawn to like, oh, I just got to have this body. Oh, I got to have this. That's not love. We were talking about that a couple of weeks ago. I don't know if it was the in-person or the online one. We were talking about that a couple of weeks ago. It might have been last week online. Um, you know, that's what I'm uh, I'm giving the word and, you know, can mean different things to different people. I'm calling that passion. Like you're just looking for drama. You're just looking for um, uh, someone to play your patterns with. And that and, and it, it's like a. Uh, it's like this, this interesting attraction. So it's not to resist that attraction at all. The attraction is giving you a gift, but to be really alert and, 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 and aware, okay, this doesn't mean that I have like this tremendous love for this person. I'm just attracting this person because I need to, uh, I need to heal. And even attracting isn't, isn't like close to what's true it's more like i'm projecting this person like this because it brings up a feeling in me that can help me heal the the cause of that feeling what's making me feel that way in the first place because it's not him being an asshole that's making that feeling come up that's not how it is the feeling is already there and you project this guy acting like an asshole who you love tremendously, apparently, to bring that feeling up to the surface. So it's like, OK, thank you. Thank you for showing me what I need to see. And, you know, once you're able to laugh with it and I love I love this, too. How do we allow people to change in our perception? It's so funny because these two sentences together. They just point to exactly what's going on here. It's like, why do I feel tremendous love for this man that keeps telling me I need to change? And how do we allow people to change in our perception? So it sounds like this man needs to change from your perception. It sounds like this man, you know, is like, if you like, you, you'll be a lot better off if this man just changes right um and then it's the same thing it's like he's uh, why am i tremendous love really this is like an attraction kind of aversion attraction kind of um energy um because he's mirroring that back to you okay so um it's like you're asking for him to change there's a secret wish within yourself that you change and and here's the thing it's like it's as if you have changed the thought. It's as if you have changed. You haven't changed. You never change. You can never, ever change. Okay. So, yes, it is instant. Uh, it, it takes willingness for the instant shift to occur. There can't be willingness while the goal is to get people in the perception to change. So that's going to stop it. If you want, if, the, if there's this thing like, oh, I just want them to change. No, it's like your perception change. They can stay exactly the same. And see, this is how it works. Your perception has to change first in order to allow the people you're projecting to change. Perception changes first, then people change and i'll tell you what once your perceptions change perception is changed if you don't perceive a change in him there is no more attraction because you guys are not that's healed in you that's healed and you know what it's healed in him too as soon as he's ready to accept it for himself so you can say that um also you will have the perception of people in your experience guys whatever um being really sweet to you according to how sweet you are with yourself um uh right you are not a victim i love that you i, I love that you just like uh put that out there. I am not a victim. And yet there's acting as a victim. So that's perfect. Because you know that that's what it's for. It's for seeing. 
How do we allow people to change in our perception? See, um, that's a that's a sense as if what he's giving you isn't a gift as it is. You know, when my daughter was going through her little, um, what was it, a year long of some doing some white stuff, cocaine slash meth, I don't know. Um, uh, when my daughter was going through that kind of stuff, she was, you know, the perception was that she was being pretty mean toward me. And my friends were saying, oh, Hope, I know she's going to come back to you. I just know it. And I go, you know what? I don't need anything. I don't need anything to change. I'm not saying I need anything to change. It's not like that. Because whatever she is, whatever she is going through, she needs that for her awakening she needs that so that she can see through the illusions she made and whatever my perception of it is is for me to see through the illusions i made so it's just all so blessed so there's not this there's not this oh i just need her to get off of this shit and come back and be my daughter again it loves me again you know, um, and, you know, in my case, I had the perception, my daughter came back to me very quickly. And, um, and, you know, she's super uh, awake, she feels definitely uh, more, uh, more expansive through that. I hope you guys can hear me just start going. Um, I could barely hear myself, but I think the Mac picks it up nice. But just in not demanding that she come back, not demanding that she be a certain way in order for me to be okay. You know, I had my moments. I mean, I remember sitting on the back steps and feeling kind of hopeless. And just sitting on the back steps and kind of looking up at the sky and just um, being like, okay, show me, you know, because it's like, when I feel like that, I know I'm just believing something that's not true. So I'm making illusions um, for myself and I'm projecting a feeling to make the illusion seem like it's really meaningful. So in just asking for the freedom, basically you're asking for the freedom to be happy. No matter what you're perceiving, no matter what the perception is, you're just asking for freedom to be happy. Happy is gratitude. I feel grateful for you, whatever it is. And if they come back to you, great. If they don't come back to you, awesome. A relationship never ends. A relationship never ends. Whether our bodies are drawn apart or not, that's not our choice. And when we're when we're with someone, if we're in appreciation of them, if we're appreciating them, we're using the situation for healing. We're actively using the situation for healing by appreciating them. Basically, no matter what the person seems to be giving you, you're saying thank you in humility, you know, in humility for that. You're not choosing to be with a person or not be with a, a person. That's not your choice to make. It never has been. So when people are telling you, just leave them, just leave them, just leave them, they're mirroring your own concept, the concept that you're holding on to, that says that you are capable of leaving him. You're not capable of leaving him. This is like an addiction, okay? This is like an addiction. You're addicted to a feeling. You're always addicted to thoughts and feelings. You're never addicted to any person, place, or thing. It's always addicted to thoughts and feelings. So you're getting this sense that you need this. You're getting your sense, you're getting this sense that you need this feeling. And so your mind is making illusions that you're drawn toward this person because that's uh, a, a, a way that your mind can use a perception of him as a device 
to bring that feeling to the surface. The feeling's already there. It's just being brought to the, to the person or being, being brought to the surface using this person as a device, as something that you can use to bring it to the surface. So they're doing you a huge service in that. And would you do me a favor and get some tea? It's, I already put it in the cup and everything. I just didn't bring it out here. Thank you. We'll wait a sec for Anne because I know she comes here for wisdom dialogue. Yes, yes. Looks like I have a fun question from Jill. Good job, Jill. You did some writing there. If you have any questions, you can put them on Facebook. You can also just raise your hand. Um, I love your questions. They're so much fun. I love you. When you, uh, when you bring your questions to me and you bring them up and you're um, willing to be transparent like that, it gives me hope. I really appreciate it. Um, because, you know, that's the thing. When you bring your confusion to the surface, to the light of day, it gets resolved. And that, no, that, that not only helps me, that helps everyone. That is so beautiful. Thank you so much. Okay, let's see what Jill has here. I'm starting a new job with a big learning curve for me. I have feelings of inadequacy and unworthiness arising. Hooray! Yes, yes, yes. You know that's the whole reason you got that job? You know that's the whole entire reason you got the job? Uh, uh, what did you think you got it for? Did you think you got it for what? For money? For uh, the title? For being able to brag to your friends? No, you got it for that feeling. You got it because you wanted to bring that feeling up. Unworthiness. Um, I suck energy. So great. Let's have fun with it. Okay. Because that's how your spirit views it. And this perfect judgment uh, that your spirit has is uh, that your spirit uses. Um, boy, this is fun. This is fun. Starting a new job with a big learning curve. Good. I have feelings of inadequacy. So you're standing there. And let's say you have someone who's like I was when I used to train people in the corporate world. I'd walk in and I go, okay, do that. Oh, uh, what? You didn't write it down? You didn't write down how I told, I told you how to do it. I just showed you how to do it yesterday. What the fuck? So you notice you projected someone to say that to you. All those feelings of unworthiness are arising. All it takes is willingness to see I'm making this for this feeling. I, I like set that person there. I set that person in, mo in motion to show me where I'm, where I can uh, use some compassion. I set that person, you know, there's where are the parts of me that I don't see where I'm holding on to false beliefs where it hurts and I can use some compassion. So you get a feeling like unworthiness, inadequacy. It's saying you can use some compassion there. So instead of following around the thoughts of what this person said to, to you, was it justified, all these different kinds of stuff, get the feeling and let, let everything on the surface take care of itself. You don't need to care whether you keep this job. You can be completely careless about things like that. Completely. Be there for the fun. Be there for the entertainment. Hey, here you go. Uh, you know, a person's like, don't, you know, reflecting to you that you didn't, you know, that really, when those feelings come up, don't you get afraid of what people are going to say? If people are going to see, oh no, if they see it, that means it's true. <laughs> oh no, if they see my inadequacy, then what? They're just going to say, oh, you got to go home. You know, one time I went, this is before I knew how to type really well. When I was first a paralegal, believe it or not, I was paralegal so long ago that I didn't have a computer to do my briefs. I actually used a pen and a yellow pad of paper and I wrote everything. So I did that for two years. That was my job. I wrote all my motions like that. Um, and then 
I didn't have that job anymore. So I was going looking for a job and everyone wanted paralegals who typed. So I said, okay, well, uh, I could at least type 40 words a minute. I didn't know. I wasn't on the typewriter. I was like, well, I could at least type 40 words a minute. This was probably like, I don't know, 1990. So um, I put down, I can type 40 words a minute. I go in, the first thing they do before anything is give you a typing test. So there's the boss. This guy is completely stressed out, right? It's a law firm. And that, that's what I experienced a bunch. It was really fun. Um, I'm sure I'm projecting them like that. Uh, law firm seems stressful to me. Uh, guys stressing out like behind me while I'm doing my test. I was like, oh, this ought to be fun. And so I'm taking the test and I'm like, peck, 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 peck um, on the keyboard. And the guy just like throws whatever is up. He like has a fucking tizzy that I even came in there. And like, I'm just, a, I'm a complete piece of shit that I even came in there and I couldn't even type like that. And, uh, and, and I was like, well, you know, it was just like, uh, for me, I was like 20 years old or 21 or something like that. And I just got the perception like, um, wow, I guess he, he doesn't want to know what I can do. Okay, that's cool. And, you know, just keep on looking around. Um, no, no need to be devastated about that. I just thought it was kind of funny, you know. Um, I want to, I want to, this is what I want. I want to type really, really fast. It's funny because I was like super talented as a paralegal. So the attorneys that did get me that could see through the typing thing, <laughs> they did get me, they were like, holy shit. Like, holy shit. Like, how much do you want? And stuff like that. Um, uh, and, the, and the only thing that prevents them from seeing you or prevents you from having an experience like that, like people can recognize your gifts because we all have gifts, you know? Um, and people can recognize your gifts is that sense like, oh, I failed, you know? And um, I, I wasn't just one to take on that thing. Like, oh, I failed. I was like, just kind of like, ooh, that was weird. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not like I'm not worth my salt as a paralegal because I'm pecking. I'm actually pecking on the keyboard. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yeah, being just like really, really grateful um, that anyone would be reflecting and that fear too, that they are going to reflect that back. To, oh my, oh my gosh. What do you, what do you see? um that i'm this or that or i'm not picking up on things fast so it's up to you jill to be in that and like you're breathing slow right you're you're watching your breath when you're watching your breath you're breathing slow in work kind of situations um because uh you know if you notice whenever you're stressed your breath is kind of uh, choppy and stuff like that but when you turn your attention back to the to breath you start breathing slow so that's really all it takes you know turn your att attention to the breath, start breathing slow, look at it for, as an opportunity to bring up that hidden sense of unworthiness, um, inadequacy, look at it as that kind of opportunity and, you know, get excited, let the feelings come to you. And, you know, some of them might feel like they're challenging and that's only because you built up resisting a resistance about them, but let the feelings come to you and watch them as they evolve, they change. It's really interesting. You can get really curious about that. Watch while you're in your workday. You could get these um, almost like a hit of bliss, you know, almost like a, um, it, it's almost like this natural high that just comes up, that it comes about. It's like, um, it's almost like the way I sense it is there'll be a, a, a sense of some tension. Like maybe I'll even notice that like around my hips, I'm tensing up around the hip joints. And, and just like doing a scan of my body during the workday and seeing that something can be released. It's like, ah, and you, you know, you start feeling all this pleasure. I was telling my husband, I was walking around and I was like, wow, when I walk, I feel so much pleasure. It's just like, it's almost like orgasmic right now when I just walk because it just feels like there's so much um, release going on just in the joints, like all through the, uh, the body structure, you know, I've shared before the body isn't even real. The body is a set. We use the body like this. Um, it's, it's made of thought it's conceptual. So we're sensing these concepts in, in, in a form of feeling and I, and, and you know, the feeling is really subtle when you're paying attention and you're aware of the subtle feeling 
it is beautiful. It's orgasmic. It's loving. It's compassionate. It's how we all deserve to feel. And I'll tell you what, each day when I wake up in the morning, the first thing I make a, a point before my mind goes into thought or after it goes into thought, if it just goes into thought first, then, you know, um, but I'm allowing myself first thing to get that sense of what it feels like to be receiving compassion from the source and to notice that I'm worthy of even more than that, but I'm not worthy of less than that feeling today. And so when there's a sense of a feeling that's not up to par with that feeling that I felt first thing in the morning that I allowed for myself, I know my mind needs a correction. So all day long, I'm just allowing my mind to have correction. That's the release because all day long, illusions are coming in. Look, I'm finding myself, um, you know, doing worky type stuff. Like I went on, uh, I had a great, I, I had a great work type experience. Um, like the other morning, I, uh, what was I doing? I was looking at Google analytics and I go, oh, just out of curiosity, how does our website do? Um, cause we just got this new web platform in 2018, I think, or it might've been 19. I'm not sure. Um, but I, I, I did this Google analytics report and it shows that since the time we got this new website platform, our visitors to our website has gone down, 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 down. And I saw that and it just like put like this major, whoa, was like a, a major, uh, sense of anxiety that was that's the closest thing I can name it as you know it's not, not like it really needs a name it's an upset feeling this major this sense of whoa it was like big and I immediately I stop and just get that feeling I'm like wow that's a pattern feeling that's what it and and you know that's what it's for so it's like just allowing that pattern feeling to be there it's like whoa it's like oh my goodness um like I need some help with this. Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. I have this bitching ass website. And you know what? The thing is, the conversions are way up on it. This is miraclebotanicals.com I'm talking about, in case you guys are wondering. Um, the conversions are way up on it. So we've actually been getting more sales, even though there's less traffic. Okay. Um, so I'm like, oh, wow. Well, uh, okay. So first thing, relax. And then all of a sudden, I just know what to do. It's just like the, all these... Um, and, and, and it's done for me. That's the thing, because I'm in a relaxed state. It's always being done for you. Um, and someone said, who does it, the spirit or the ego? And it's a conscious evolution. Let's not even put a name on it like that. Let's say it's conscious evolution. It's just a conscious evolution, impersonal, based on whatever it is that you need to learn, based on which is based on whatever it is that you thought you wanted to see. <laughs> so... <laughs> so so as you're as you're going through seeing something that you don't think you want to see um knowing that you actually did put it there for that purpose allows you to just get that feeling so once i once i got the feeling and i was just so grateful for it i was like oh thank you so much for this experience and it's like oh well you know maybe miracle botanicals isn't meant to keep on going on too that's the thing it's just not like grasping to any concepts like oh let's just sit, sit with this like is there really something to save here you know is there really anything to say um so so immediately um once there was all this relief there is and this was sunday morning so um all of a sudden there were four different emails that just manifested in um and we're scheduled to send out on Monday morning. And then that was the end of it. And then it's like having fun, you know, it's like, and the whole thing just becomes fun because there's nothing that can be wrong. There's nothing really that can be wrong. So you get these perceptions. I've had the perception before. Oh my God, I have no way out. The only thing I can possibly do is go bankrupt. And then I found myself calling a bankruptcy attorney and just feeling as I'm having this conversation with this person, just feeling what it's like. And, you know, through by the end of the conversation, it was so clear that there was no resonance. I didn't feel I, I didn't feel um, led to call another bankruptcy attorney. Also didn't feel led to call that bankruptcy attorney back. Just having that interaction 
was exactly what was necessary. In each of these interactions, no matter what it is, the healing is going to be maximal through that. And if you don't need more healing, it's not about whether there's bankruptcy or not, because it just doesn't matter. It's just the healing that needs to take place will take place. So it's not like um, I need to try not to go bankrupt or I need to like try to get bankruptcy happening or anything. It's just a matter of feeling. And um, that's how you that's basically how you listen, because, you know, the thoughts that are becoming available to you from moment to moment are becoming available to, to you because they resonate with what you're making of your present moment perception. So, so, so based on whatever you're making of this moment, certain thoughts are being made available to you. So when you're making something of this moment that hurts your mind, you're getting an upset feeling and you're looking for an, a different interpretation. It's kind of like saying you're following this thread of bliss. So you keep on getting you're, you're, you keep on getting these more blissful and um, beautiful sensations. Like even when I got that big kind of boom sensation, when I perceived that the traffic on our website has gone down um, over the past two or three years, I forgot what it was. Um, and then I got that big hit. It's like it goes into because you get that big hit and because there's so much lack of joy being perceived, um, you get that much more joy from allowing it to be released. So it's like you're following the thread of thread of bliss and you get this blip where it's not bliss uh, you, and then and then you can fall even more deeper into that sense. It's like, ah, thank goodness, none of this matters. It's all for this. So you forget and you remember again, and you forget and you remember again, and you keep on doing that. And as you, and as you go through it over time, you automatically get better at it. And you automatically learn what it takes to maintain more of a blissful vibe throughout the entire day, no matter what seems to be arising, no matter what you seem to do. Notice how babies can go through, uh, can go through an upset emotion just really fast and be right to something else. So you can even have the perception of yourself having an emotional outburst. You know, a lot of us still have these emotional outbursts where it could be really harmful. Like, um, you know, well, it's not ever really harmful. Like, let's not even take it that seriously, you know? Um, but if you get the perception that it's really harmful and you might even have the perception of someone else being like, wow, that really hurts me, um, the way you're being, what you're saying. Um, so if you're getting those kinds of outbursts like that, you know, once you become gentle with yourself, which could just be in an instant, once you become gentle with yourself, you're like, you know, uh, sorry about that. Whatever I was, I, I was making about you, that wasn't about you. Just that honesty that wasn't about you. I made you like that. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for being as you are. Do you want me to change? No, I don't. I do not want you to change. And I don't not want you to change. It's either way. I, I don't care. You know why? Because I know however you are to me is exactly how I need you to be to me. So I actually just do not care. Um, I know everything is changeful. I know you're going to change. There's not a chance that you're not because, you know, the, the perception I got of you is changeful. In reality, you never change and you're never changing. But since the perception I got from you, I got of you is changeful and the perception that I got of you is uh, making you out to be a less than pure innocence, um, then that is definitely going to change because I'm going to change my mind about you. And I'm going to see that you're exactly as I want you to be. I'm going to see that you're giving me uh, the gifts that I need to awaken my mind, which is all I want. And, you know, for those of you who don't know it, this is all you want. All you want is to heal with your brothers and sisters through the situations that you're getting perceptions of. You don't really want anything else, Jill. You don't want to keep your job. And, uh, and uh, to my other friend that wrote that amazing Facebook post where it involved almost running someone's head over, you know, um, you're perfect just as you are. You don't need to leave anybody and you don't not need to leave anybody. 
Um, all you need is a little shift in your perspective, um, a little shift in the way you look at it, because you look at it as if this person's behavior can somehow do something to you. That's a victim, okay? That person's behavior can't make it can't make you do anything. Um, uh, you are not drawn to this person because you want to help them. In fact, drawn to isn't isn't really the word. It would more be more like projected. You aren't projecting this person in this way because you want to help them. You're projecting them in that way because that's what you believe you are and you need help and you can be helped through that and when you accept the help through that you have no more need for someone to tell you that you need to change but it's really great because you can see how um you know you're also projecting a need for him to change so that's really fun Why does he want me to change so bad? Oh my goodness, I want him to change from wanting me to change so bad. That's hilarious. You gotta love that. And you know, you gotta love yourself for playing it out too. It's funny. I mean, I've done it, you know. Um, I've done a lot of that. It's how I know. It's how I know it's funny. Cape chamomile. I'm using some cape chamomile right now. It's a super sweet floral. This one's on our website too. If you type in Cape, you'll get it. Cape chamomile. It's my favorite chamomile. Uh, it's super strong and, and uh, feminine, very feminine, very nice feminine energy and gentle as well. It's like, ah, ah. So. Oh, it hurts so much that the rent and bills are way past due that it is stressful. I would like to break the pattern of lack. Hooray. Yes. Thank you for going through that. Um, I'm going to tell you, you know, Maria, it takes so much more energy to make a perception of lack than it does to perceive abundance. Because abundance is natural. That's who you are. That's natural for you. Perceiving lack, that is taking a heck of a lot of energy to hold up concepts that make you out as if you're lacking something. Okay. So just, just because you get the perception, and believe me, I know this is easier said than done. I'm not trying to be condescending here. Um, you know, just put a little bit of willingness toward this, okay? Um, just because you have the perception that your bills are way past due does not mean that you have to be stressed about it. That does not mean you have to be stressed about it. In fact, that is the pattern. That is the pattern. That is the habit that you have. You're projecting that bills are way past due because you want to get that stressful feeling. Um, so, so one coming, admitting, I want this stressful feeling right now. When you know you want it, you can embrace it. Embrace the stressful feeling. You project bills past due so you can get that feeling. It's all pattern like that. The whole perception, it's all pattern like that. So you admit that's why you project it. You get that feeling, get curious about it. Listen to your inner teacher, okay? That's gonna make it so that you're excited. That's how I am. I get excited about stuff like this. Uh, I get excited and it's like, and, and, you know, I might get a sense like, oh my gosh, what if it doesn't work out? And, you know, it's like, of course, everything is working out. And, you know, you'll go in and out of that. You'll go in and out of getting that relief. So it's, it's your allowing yourself to get relief from stress in the moment. When you apply reason to it, which is the truth, that you project the stressful feeling, you're not getting it because the bills are past due. It's quite the other way around. 
you have a hidden stressful feeling, you need to project something so you can bring that feeling to the surface. In this case, it's bills past due. So what do you do? You embrace the stressful feeling. You thank the perception of bills past due. Dismiss that messenger. Oh, maybe get a little bit curious. How is this gonna pan out? I, I'm excited to see how it's gonna work out. Everything's always gonna work out. It always does. I'm excited to see how this is gonna work out. And my challenge here is to stay calm through the unfolding of it working out. That's the only challenge. And only the ego is challenged in that because the ego doesn't trust that it's all working out. But if you just take your own experience, you can see it all works out. It just keeps, doesn't it just keep on flowing? It just keeps on going. It's all coming together just so you can get a perception, just so you can get a feeling and accept a healing um, that is your birthright and the reason why you get any perception at all. What about my belief that it was a good thing to uninvite some people out of my life? Un well, you know, it's great. Whatever seems, whatever seems to have occurred, that's great. You didn't do it. That's the point. So it's like, oh, you're patting yourself on the back. I did this. I did this thing. That's the thing is don't identify as a doer. I would just say don't identify as a doer because then you get attached to a certain way of, of being. What the ego likes to do is make rules on how you do things. Um, so it's just like, hey, that was interesting. Whoa, I just uninvited, whatever that means to you. I'm not sure what that means, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, oh, that was awesome. I just got the illusion. I invited, uninvited all these people um, from my life. And it's fun because last week on um, in-person wisdom dialogues, we were talking about that with boundaries because I was talking about, oh man, when you, when, when you have a boundary, when you're being guided by spirit and you have a boundary come up, that it's, it just is that that's just what it is. It doesn't need to have any fire behind it. Um, it, it's just like, okay, that's what it is. That, that person isn't a person in my life, at least not for this moment. Um, and, and it, or, or it's some, or it's something else. It's like, this is what I require in order for this to keep going this way. This is the kind of thing I require is like, whoa, boom, those just come up. And, you know, they, it, and, and by all means, you know, don't let the ego take hold of it and go this now this boundary is here forever. Uh, let them be flexible. Let them uh, let them go. Let them change. Um, but what I'm saying is it's not a boundary that you set and you, you know, being aware of that, that these boundaries that come up, they're not these aren't you setting boundaries. Um, there is nothing like that. It's just that that's that interacting that relating isn't useful anymore you already learned all you needed to learn from that and that's the only reason you can come up with reasons you know you're given all these reasons for why they're uninvited or, well yeah they acted like this and they did this and this happened and this happened you know what i do i just let all the perceptions occur because um Whatever's going on, whatever's going on on the surface, consciousness can totally take care of that for me. Yeah, I'm not, a, I, I'm not identified as consciousness either. Consciousness is working within us. It, we're not consciousness. We're before consciousness. We're awareness. Um, so, so it's like consciousness can work all that stuff out. I don't have to put any of that on my own shoulders. I just enjoy the show. It's like, oh, there I am putting up a boundary. I'm all, also part of the show that I'm watching. Yep, I guess. Well, why do you think, well, why are you doing that boundary? I don't know, but that's what it is. That's what it is. I think you should do this. And I love to have my boundaries challenge. That's like one of my funnest things. I think that is awesome. It's like, okay. Cause you know, I'll just watch myself and it, you know, if I cave or what, you know, but I'll watch like the vibration, I'm watching it vibrationally. So, um, there's a difference between caving and just like, oh, uh, now it's a yes. 
There's a real difference from that. You can sense it uh, vibrationally. You can sense it in your energy field. You know, there's a different, there's, there's different ways that we sense these fluctuations. Um, you know, we're all, we're all unique in that way. Um, I'm usually telling people, Hey, pay attention to the core. Um, that seems to be where a lot of energy is playing out. And, you know, that's from my perception, who knows for you, maybe it's playing out in your knee. It could be, you know, it's like, um, you know, you're watching these energy fluctuations and you learn how to kind of get cues like that, because that's how the spirit relates with you through these energy fluctuations and feelings. Um, the ego takes a feel, a feeling like there's an ups, upset feeling. Something's definitely wrong in the world. Um, from the spirit's perspective, something's wrong with the way you're thinking. You've gone down a path where you're thinking against yourself and you're hurting your own mind. So you're, that's why you're getting that feeling. So it depends who you're looking at it with spirit or ego. That depends on whose advice you're going to take and what you're going to use the sense of an upset feeling for. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, you can look at that, Kai, if you're having the sense of, you know, you, you've um, found yourself uninviting people out of your life and you've gotten a, a major shift, um, you know, that's just, it's kind of like level up, you know, it's like you're moving into a different, uh, uh, it's like you're moving into it in a different field um and opening up for new uh, new information it's all information all of these meetings unmeetings whatever it's all information so the consciousness is taking out in information and playing it out through perception you don't have to ha concern yourself with that at all all you need to do is forgive your illusions which is basically you get an upset feeling that comes up and you're ready to have your mind change you're ready to have your belief corrected so that you can get some relief every single time you take that relief your mind learns so much that you know i've heard it said by one of my yoga teachers that each time you're following a thought and you allow it to just pass it's like doing a push-up in your brain because it's like you're making this different connection. Now, brain is also in the mind. So it's also symbolic. And we look at it symbolically. Symbolically, you can see these different connections being made in the brain. Um, and, you know, that's a symbol of these different connections being made in the mind. So you're open now for new opportunities and more information to come in when you're paying attention to what your function in all of this is and not trying to steal consciousness's function. That's not for you to do. See, well, the reason it's not your function and it's consciousness is function because consciousness is conscious of everything in the world at the same time. And consciousness knows exactly what needs to occur. And whatever occurs it through consciousness, which is whatever you perceive is perfection. Because it perfectly demonstrates what it is that you want it to be true and what you need to see through the illusion to let go of what you're using to uphold that illusion okay isn't that fun it makes it so enjoyable it makes it so that you can play and laugh like a child and basically uh you know dream your way into heaven i mean we are awakening in a dream you guys we're awakening in a dream as long as you're perceiving in separation meaning you're seeing out of two eyes you think you're you think you're seeing out of two eyes it's a very convincing illusion that you are seeing out of two eyes for instance or you're getting another sense you hear you taste anything like that you are asleep dreaming Okay, you may be awake in the dream, and it's likely if you're listening here to wisdom dialogues, you are awake in the dream. Great, congratulations. You're in phase two. I've heard it called phase two. I like that one. You're in phase two. There's only two phases. <laughs> Isn't that great? <laughs> congratulations. Welcome to phase two. It's the final phase. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> yeah, you know, it, you're you're awake in the dream if you're just willing to see that you're projecting it. You just, you know, you your whole your whole thing changes when you're like, holy shit, I'm for you know, like logically, reasonably, you're projecting. It. You may not you may not get that as a perception all the time. Certainly, when you're upset, you're not in that mindset that you're projecting it. You know. Once you start applying reason that you are projecting it to while you while that sense is up, while that feeling sense is up, it's like a shock. It's like, you know, there's some resistance to that. A lot of the times we'll completely forget about it. It's okay if you completely forgot to apply reason to it. You just went through a total reaction and stuff. Maybe you went through it for a week or something. You totally forgot to apply any reason to it. It's okay because as soon as you pop your head up again and apply reason to it, you're getting better at this. You're going to see sooner. You're going to start seeing in the middle of it. You're going to see seeing. Uh, it's got. It's not going to have to hurt so much. It's not going to have to hurt so much because you're used to seeing it sooner, so you don't have to get a big, you know, pain thing out of it. You know, uh, the more you become willing to feel at first, it seems like, oh no, that's too much. I can't just feel that. Like, like for me, when I got that sense, oh my God, the, the, the um, visits have gone down over the years, the visits to our site have gone down and I got this big sense, this big rush. Um, the first thing the mind wants to do is run. And when I just say, oh no, this is, this is exactly what I need. This big rush right here is giving me some information. I need to take in this information. So basically you're just like allowing the information to, to come in instead of resisting it. So what happens is consciousness doesn't even get the information from it because there's this resistance. What consciousness gets is resistance. So it starts making more things along that, along those lines, well, around the lines of the resistance you're projecting over your experience. So yeah, if it hurts, let it hurt so good. Just like that song. Hurt so good. Come on, baby, make it hurt so good. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes love don't feel like it should make it hurt so good. For you young guys that don't know uh, John Cougar Mellencamp, that's a little, you know, hope version of it. <laughs> yeah, it's like, ah, oh, thank you. Oh, pain. Oh, thank you. Especially emotional pain, you know. It's like, that's uh, the, the resistance that you come up against is telling you that, oh my god you can't handle this you got to try to get away from this you got to try to get out of this you got to run like it would tell me i need to make those emails from this feeling so i could tell when i'm making an email from that feeling because the email comes out all victimized you did this you told me that i when i went to your platform we would have better traffic he did i think i don't know i get that perception but <laughs> <laughs> but you know it becomes irrelevant in the moment and you're not victimized it's like hey bro check this out i made this picture of this and um been on there for this much time and looks like it keeps on going down do you know anyone who can pro possibly help with that you know it's a lot different from a victimized kind of point of view watch like i, I love this i was sharing with my friends i had this had this one text the other day and uh i went to but I sat down, I went to reply to the text, and I wrote something, and I was like, nope, that doesn't feel good. Erase the whole thing, write it again. You know, the, it was, the text was kind of triggering for me. I could tell because I wasn't able to just like respond. I, I feel everything. So I'm typing in a response, oh, that doesn't feel good. That's not something that I could eat, I could share, you know? Uh, it, it isn't, it isn't something I can share. If it doesn't feel good, it's just a projection. I can't even share it. Uh, I can't even share anything. So I want to share love through things. So I'm watching how it feels. It takes me like 45 minutes before it feels good to me. Time is not being wasted in that. That's being used for feeling, for feeling through back to where it feels like, ah, oh, that's sharing. Okay, now that's sharing. You know, you're not like trying to 
project any guilt on someone. You're not trying to make people see that they're doing something wrong or to harm you or anything like that. And that's a share. What will come of it? I don't know. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Let's keep on having fun with everything and all of the solutions come to us. I know when I was uh, hanging out with my husband in the mid, in the earlier years, you know, at one point, I, I, I know I shared this a lot with you guys. I love to shop. I find myself shopping all the time. It's so funny. Um, and, you know, I'm using love really lightly there. It just means that I'm interested in it. I, get desi I, I, I desire, I have these desires for it. I move for, toward it. I don't get, I don't allow myself to get attached to it. I use anything that's desire for releasing any attachment. Um, you know, I, I think something, sometimes people uh, think, well, you know, you don't have a budget or anything. What if you just like completely go bankrupt? And I'm, I'm like, you know what? When I, when I hear that and the fear in it, the kind of fears I hear in it uh, or hear that, wow, this is my worst nightmare that you're spending all this money, you know, I hear something like that. I'll be like, I'll get this sense like, I hope it happens. I hope you completely run out of money. I hope I completely run out of money. Um, because it's gonna, it seems like that's gonna be like the worst thing that can happen. Good, let's, let, let's get that over. Let's just get that over with. Because it's only a sense that we use this thing called money, uh, you know, like, that we need it to get the things that we need. And that's why we've been using it in the first place. There's a sense that we need it to get the things that we need in the world. And that's why, we, you know, we, we, it seems like it's scarce, like there's not enough, there's 1% and they got all the money. Look, all the money in the world comes from you. All the money in the world comes from you. If you don't have enough, if you seem to not have enough, you always have enough. That's not possible for you to not have enough. If you seem to not have enough, to meet your bills, that's perfect for seeing through the idea that any of us need money. That's why I say thank you so much. If you're going through something like that. Thank you so much. You're doing that for all of us to show that we actually don't need this stuff. These pieces of paper, these coins, these numbers in a bank account to get what we need in life. We actually don't need those things. And that's what you're, you're helping to open our consciousness to um, the fact that we don't need it. You are helping us. It's kind of like you're on the cutting edge of that. That doesn't mean that tomorrow it can't change to where you're, you feel like, wow, I just have all that I need to meet everything. And you will if you're open to healing that perception of lack. It'll be like no matter what you see in your bank account, the abundance you feel comes from that abundance of, of spirit that I have exactly what I need. It's like, oh, I have exactly what I need. And the more that you get into that feeling for that for yourself, the more you'll perceive it. Remember that you have to change the beliefs first before you would be able to perceive it in the world. And how do you know the beliefs have been changed first? You don't give a flying fuck how much money or lack of it you seem to have. You do not care. You're just, you're so happy that you do not mind. That's when you're going to see a change in the perception, okay? So some of you know, I've been doing a lot of baking lately. Well, not really, but I've been the, getting the perception that I'm a baker. I've been uh, 
making different crusts for pies, making pies and making bread just about every day. And, you know, one thing that, that, that uh, the baking experience really teaches you is this way of being patient. This uh, way of being patient with yourself for one, because I know for one thing, um, I was drawn to this, um, it's called a Dutch oven. It's a, it's a clay oven that's shaped like a huge loaf of bread. And, um, you know, it's kind of rare that people use that to make bread apparently, but I don't know. I just felt drawn to that and also to make sourdough bread and to make my own sourdough starter. So I'm making all this, all, all this bread. I find myself making all this bread and I just completely, you know, I pretty much, it looks like I suck at it. It does. My stuff is coming out dense. It's not rising. It's like, you know, a pancake. And um, there's this little sense of, will I ever get it? Will I ever get bread making right? So when I went on my ayahuasca adventure, there was a baker there and he was baking bread. And I go, oh, you're baking bread. I love how the synchronicity, the synchronicities occur. Oh, you're baking bread. I just started baking bread. Can you give me any pointers? And he said, keep baking bread, keep trying. You keep trying, you're gonna find out that you're baking great, great bread. And I go, oh, wow, that is a really good pointer. Thank you for that. That's awesome. That's really inspiring. Um, so I find myself, you know, drawn to the bread. I think I like to play with that dough. I get to do these stretch and fold things where I pull the dough up really high and then fold it over itself and, and, and then let it wait. And there's lots of waiting in between. And, um, and so over time, I find myself getting it just perfect. Now my family is like, oh my God, what happened? And the same thing with my pie crust and everything and everything just keeps on improving. And, you know, that's how it is. That's, that's how it is. That's how consciousness is plays out. It's like, if you're interested in something, if you're paying attention to, to something, if you're being gentle on yourself, if you're not buying into the frustrations, um, you know, when I was when I was first making the starter, you know, to get it up to speed, it probably took me a couple weeks to get the starter, just the sour starter, up to speed. And I kept on going through all this flour, and my, you know, it takes throwing flour away. If you've ever done it before, it takes throwing uh, throwing some of your baby that you've been making away, and then adding more flour and water, and then the next day throwing some of your baby away and making more flour and water. Um, and, you know, and, and it just wasn't quite there. It wasn't quite to how I wanted it. So I just kept on doing it. And, you know, I, I project my husband is making a comment. Of, Isn't this like you're throwing away all this good stuff? Why are you throwing away all this good stuff? And I'm like, oh, that's just part of the pro process. And, you know, there's a sense that, um, that, that you shouldn't be wasting stuff and stuff like that. Anything that comes up like that. It's just that there's just allowed to be an ease with it because that just allows you to go forward with whatever it is that's coming up as your interest. And, you know, that's part of what, it, you know, living joyfully, living free, um, living free to explore whatever it is that's arising because whatever it is that's arising brings the perfect teaching, learning opportunities to you. Um, also, all the patients going through these different steps and these different procedures and doing it again. Um, the, the sourdough recipe that I'm using is probably like five or six pages long. So there's a lot of steps and a lot of information in there. And one of them is, you know, after you've been working all on, it, on it for like 12 hours, it says, if your dough is like this at this point, you're not gonna have bread that rises, bake it anyways, make the cooth, make, make croutons with it, enjoy, try again. Uh, so basically, you know, just like uh, teaching just this, this patience um, that, you know, spans over like days and weeks and stuff like that. And it really reminds me of this patience with yourself as you're learning to get that knack, as you're learning to get that knack for getting the perception of an upset feeling and immediately asking for a different interpretation, immediately asking to see clearly you know, you're going to go through all kinds of this trial and error, trial and error. But if you keep looking in that direction and, you know, you're going to be called back to it, even if you don't look in that direction, you're going to be called back to it because that drive, that, that, that draw, that inner desire 
to be free from that pain, you know, uh, that seems to come from rent and bills being way past due. You are, you, you know, you have an inner desire because that's your birthright to be released from that pressure and that stress of bills um, being past due that, that you're going to be drawn back to it again and again and again. So the first time you hear it, it might sound really strange that this is just a habit. Um, there's no bills that are due. There's no rent that's past due. You may be getting perceptions like there is rent past due. You might be getting a notice on your door and stuff like that. But believe me, it's all working out. Uh, if you're willing to trust, you're going to see more opportunities. You may find yourself unwilling to trust. That's okay. Go through the feeling. That feeling, that painful feeling is an effect of your unwillingness to trust. As you allow your mind and your consciousness to gather that information, this is what it feels like to not trust. You get more interested in trusting. The more interest you have in it, the more you're willing to learn it. And the more you're willing to learn it, the more you're gonna grow into it until it's just second nature. Now that becomes the habit. Healing becomes more the habit than uh, unhealing, than projecting your hurt outwards. And, you know, that is very painful. It's a painful perception to have that you're not just taken care of. Why aren't you just taken care of? That's not true. You are taken care of. You're, you're perceiving yourself not being taken care of as if there's not enough. That's an error. That's actually an error. So you're asking to have that error corrected so then you can actually get the perception that there seems to not be enough but you don't believe it you're sure it's just it, it's a joke you're positive that it's a joke that's pure that's pure trust you're sure that's just kidding great let's see where it goes let's see where it leads us and my challenge again through all of this is to go through the unfolding and don't worry if you screw it up Go through the unfolding calmly. Let's say with a smooth breath. That's my challenge. And you know, you're going to screw it up all the time. It's great. You find yourself in a choppy breath. Oh my God, there I am holding my breath a lot. Oh, thank goodness I'm aware of that. Ah, oh, there's a deep breath. Oh, thank goodness. Easy. So simple for you. It's made so simple for you. Um, but I know saying easy is totally arrogant. I know. Um, and that's because of the ego hooks saying that you don't deserve this or you can't trust this. You can't trust yourself. That's the ego's line. You really can't trust yourself. So we make stuff up like say AA, like you can't, okay, we're going to go along with you can't trust yourself. Okay, you can't trust yourself. Now you're an addict. You can't trust yourself. Um, never take a sip of alcohol. Otherwise, you're going down. Or never take a smoke or whatever it is. Never do any of this stuff. And it's putting this pressure on you to refrain from doing something, which is itself making illusions of suffering. So, you know, people can go for a long time, lifetimes even, um, suppressing what's coming natural for them they're suppressing uh what's what they're naturally being drawn to you know like if you're drawn to drink a bunch of alcohol it's like man that could be such a big awakening for you that could be such a big healing for you if you'll use it to absolve your guilt instead of to build your guilt you know, same thing with cocaine or whatever you think it is. You know, I thought, talked about that experience that I had when I was traveling um, and, and my daughter said, oh my gosh, I just did some cocaine and it to her it was like the worst sin ever. So that's using it for one thing and you can use it for another thing. It's nothing. It is nothing. And it being nothing is what's going to allow you, it being nothing to you is what's gonna allow you to automatically see what feels good. 
gonna just automatically know and you know consciousness will make that choice for you what feels good if you feel worthy of feeling freaking good you know and if you feel worthy of feeling good no matter what choice you seem to make to you that's the right choice because you feel good you've been felt worthy of feeling good so you feel good you can't get it wrong but you can get the perception that you got it wrong. You can get perception that you got that you made the wrong choice. You know, whenever you get the perception of that you made the wrong choice, it's not because you did made make the wrong choice. It's not because the ego chose it for you. It's because you're willing to believe that you could make a wrong choice. That's all. Right now, it's instant. It's this instant. It's not because of something you did before. I mean, yeah, believing that you made a wrong choice, uh, uh, you know, it didn't happen before. That's just one, it's just the thought of separation unfolding. So, you know, if you're building up thoughts of separation, yes, it's going to lead to an upset feeling. That's how it goes. But right now, when you get the sense that you made a, a wrong choice before, this is your opportunity to get relief from the idea that you were ever capable of choosing between alternatives in the world. You're only, you're only capable of choosing whether, you're, whether or not you're gonna make those alternatives in the world meaningful. Or you're just gonna let consciousness or you know, be more playful with them. You know, it's like, let's just let consciousness play it out. Let's see how it's gonna play out. Oh my goodness, Pope, what are you gonna do? I don't know. Sometimes I have an idea of what I might do ahead of time, but I don't actually know because as soon as I show up at that place or in that circumstance, it could be completely different. In fact, when I find myself getting adamant about this, about something and say, you know what, whatever, uh, whenever this happens, this is what I'm going to do. I will find myself doing the opposite of that. Just to show me that I can't be adamant about anything in the world. Let's see if I have anything else. Wow, you guys are freaking awesome. I really appreciate you. Thank you so much uh, uh, for being with me and thank you so much for your questions. Um, uh, really sweet of people to uh, po pour out their heart, what they're going through um, and you know, bringing it to the light of day um, and awareness that it's perfect for you. Whatever you seem to be going through, it's perfect. It's like when you can rejoice in whatever it is that you seem to be going through, you are that much closer to healing what's causing this, okay? And basically you're dreaming yourself awake. So as your dream gets more and more beautiful and more and more lovely, and you're able to appreciate everything that comes up in, the, in your experience, that's you waking up from the dream of separation. You know, uh, at the very end, you're just going to laugh your ass off and um, and be surprised at the end of this dream. And it will happen in maybe uh, maybe in this lifetime, it's possible in this lifetime. And that, you know, that's also where patience comes in, because, um, it, you know, it, it's patience with yourself. You can accept complete, you know, complete release from this dream and in an instant, if you are willing to, um, but the fear of annihilation keeps you from doing that until you have all of your experience that you need to purify all of the fear out of your mind. It comes through the experience, it's all that fear. Like when I got that perception about the traffic on my, my website going down and it hit like that, that's fear of annihilation coming up actually. That's the only really fear we've got. We have this fear of a lot annihilation and it's, and it's coming up and it's coming up to be dealt with right there. So as, the, as we're purifying that fear of anni annihilation, we're, we're, act, we're actually thinning the veil of this world so we can see clearly what's actually here. This is a dream of awakening and it's a beautiful dream that we dream together. 
that's really sweet because it is really like we're holding each other's hand and we're uh and and we're waking each other we're waking each other up we're waking ourselves up we're helping ourselves wake up and through that we're waking our we're waking each other up through our example through our demonstration which just comes naturally we don't have to try to um make a demonstration that just comes naturally from our way of being and you know you you won't you won't even know because you're not trying to do anything you know uh, a lot of the times i'll hear something from people later and go and, and they'll go wow you know i met you at this place and had such a uh, such an effect on on me it really felt like you know you you were um your words went deeply to me and it meant this to me and stuff like that and you know i won't even have a recollection of even trying to reach that person you know and, and I'll be completely obliv oblivious to the whole thing. But it's just that I'm allowing this sweetness for myself. And that's what really, that's what we can share with each other. We're allowing that compassion, that sweet feeling for ourselves. We're not holding ourselves to any kind of certain standards. We're not, we're not holding a, a, an idea of who we think we should be. We don't think we need to improve. And that's not because we can make a, a, an interpretation of ourselves like we're absolutely perfect as um, compared with other people. We're just absolutely perfect. And so are all the other people in this perfection that gives each of us exactly what we need and exactly um, what we want to live our purpose and demonstrate to our own mind that none of this is real. We made it up and we are going to um, support, uh, support for one another uh, the end of time bringing about the end of time and you know I, I what I perceive and, and what I see coming is more people focused on that like I could see and I would be really stoked to participate in too just where uh, people their whole their their whole focus all day long is for healing these things the whole focus all day long is for healing these illusions um sort of like we have think tanks right now to come up with better inventions for the world here's the thing about inventions it doesn't matter how ingenious it is it doesn't matter, matter how great it seems it is completely fucking meaningless it all leads to death so it doesn't matter how great the invention is so when you when when you've seen that and you're aware of that you see how effective it is and how useful and meaningful it is to take in your experience and just allow healing to happen through your experience day in and day out just to um, practice that with one another um maybe you have a good friend maybe you have a partner um maybe you you just met someone in a group and you're like hey you want to do this with me where we just interact and 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 go wow I feel like that when, you know, you might even, you might even start with, you know, like nonviolent communication does it and like, Hey, when I hear you say that I feel this and the other person can just be there for them with, Oh, thank you for letting me know. And not, how can I fix this? Not how can I fix it so I can make it better for you. People can make this agreement with each other. People can make this kind of agreement with each other. Hey, let's enter into a sort of relating like this, where um, where we we just we we just experience what we experience, and we let each other know when we get a triggered feeling. But the other person doesn't try to fix anything. They just kind of go, "Oh, thank you for letting me know that," and we feel together we start feeling together and you know if you don't have a person who wants to do this with you it doesn't matter because you're only going to have a person like that around and around you and who's willing to do that with you when it's perfect for you um but you can see how that kind of relating can be glorious and you can feel into it and how much healing can come from that and that's really all it takes to allow that to pop up all over uh all i i was gonna say all over the world but there's no world so it's kind of like it's popping up all over your mind um popping out through these different microcosms of consciousness all over your mind because you're just allowing it and the more of that occurs 
the better and better it gets because more people are getting freedom and that's what's better. It's not technology. It's not getting all the money that you think you need. It's just that it's the, the freedom is good. The freedom to um, have whatever perception it is that you have. The, per, the freedom to have a perception of, oh, not enough money. And it's like, oh, this is so fun. And you're telling your friends, yeah, you guys check it out. I'm so powerful. I got this perception that I don't have enough money to pay my fucking rent. Can you believe that? And they're like, wow, that's freaking awesome. What does that feel like? What does it feel like to go through that? You know, people aren't, aren't like, oh, damn, that sucks. The Republicans or the Democrats or this or that or someone fucked it up for you. Um, uh, you got a divorce. You should have been a better wife. I don't know. All kinds of weird shit's going to come out of the ego. But, but from, from your perspective and what's natural for you, what's really natural for you is, oh, this is freaking awesome. Look, I made this manifestation that I can't pay my rent. I wonder how this is going to go down. Is there going to all of a sudden be a chunk of money and I pay my rent and I'm, am I going to end up moving out? What's going to come up when you're excited? You can see the synchronicities. So there's this verse in the Bible. My mom was sharing with me is this past week. And it says, and it says when, uh, when you hear it, when you hear it, witness to, I'm going to paraphrase. Okay. I'm just going to tell you what it means. When you, when you hear it, witness to two or more times, pay attention to it. That's the same thing as synchronicity. Okay. They're talking about that in the Bible too. You can't be aware of the synchronicities. You know, that's a, basically the illusion is witnessing things to you. So the Bible's talking about it like that. That's a synchronicity. You're hearing a witness of something two or more times. Um, you can't be aware of these synchronicities while you're feeding illusions. Like this, you know, this sense that like, you know, people are getting wrapped up in their pain. Basically, it hurts that I have this per having this perception, like I can't pay the rent. So if you're not getting so, uh, so caught up in your pain, and you're getting that painful, per painful perception, but you're, uh, you're embracing the feeling, then you're, you're available, you, you've got some awareness available to perceive the synchronicities that are popping up to you those are your opportunities you're giving off you're even you know the illusion is serving you so as you're relaxing this idea that you have to do it that you have to somehow get money or um you have to have some windfall or something has to happen um you're you're just allowing yourself to be in this state of peace with this hurt feeling so that hurt feeling is allowed to transform and in that you heal the perception that doesn't mean that you heal the perception in a way where you get more money you heal the perception in the way where you are excited about this this is fun this is now fun for you um, when you're able to laugh at that perception, then you don't need it anymore. Then there automatically just always seems to be enough. Okay. Um, and enjoy it while you need that healing because you are healing for all of us and you're healing this mental tyranny that's being put on all of us. That's driven by this sense that we need money. You know, when I was growing up and I was a missionary, one of the pieces of literature that we used to hang hand out was called the green paper pig. And it was this big pig made of money. And it was basically talking about how um, the people start worshiping money. And that's been the conditioning that the people are worshiping money as their source of sustenance when it's never been the source of sustenance. So I got some of that conditioning from the world, um, but not from my family growing up, especially in the early days, um, because we were, you know, we were on that. We were going out, we were talking to people we were saying hey there's this thing and we were kind of doing it as, as a parable with this green paper pig like this thing is deluding you this thing is leading to all kinds of suffering and this is way back in the 70s you know when i was going around with this literature like hey this is uh this is this is going to lead to much despair um and we're and you know saying it in our own way also we had this one um, it was so funny that the, uh, the graphics were amazing. 
It was America the whore. So here's America and she's a woman and she's a whore and her and her legs are open and through the, the and through this woman's legs is all this commerce <laughs> happening. <laughs> so just some fun stuff uh you know that's been that's been building up and building up and people have known about it for a while if you're kind of new to this the conditioning for money um that's been going on ever since money was even invented and it just got more um intensified over the years and now you know you see it i've seen so many transformations with it uh toward more and more as if money is a god of some sort it's like how will these people all these poor people who are on fixed income that's like one of my favorite stories all these poor people who are on fixed income they can't get their medication so first of all they've uh, they've they've uh, been conditioned with the idea that uh, their their health relies on them receiving these toxic chemicals in their body um you know their health that that's how that's how to make the magic trick that you feel better is to use this thing um, that also has been given by the mind these certain kind of effects that aren't so pleasant huh um and then not having enough money to afford them so it's like working in this whole thing oh gosh what are we gonna do we're gonna have to um oh and then this and then the planet's getting ruined and different stuff like that that comes from belief and lack and lack this has been building up for a long time. So it gets people to worship this sense that, you know, worship also worshiping mother earth. There's that too. There is no earth. Okay. It seems like mother earth is the sustenance of stuff. Just like it seems like money is the sustenance of stuff. It's really the same darn thing. You guys, this is all coming out of the mind. So when you, the, the whole global warming thing is that the earth, is lacking there's not enough there's just not enough we're, we're screwing it up we're polluting it we're screwing it up now uh i don't know maybe putting a mask on your face is going to help with that i don't know maybe that's the story that might be the story hey humans stop fucking breathing you're polluting the earth with your breath maybe that's the deal but it is it's like this uh this mindset has taken over and it's not anyone's fault. It's not like America's bad or anything. I'm not on the bandwagon. America's bad either. It's not bad or good. It's not. Um, there's this certain mentality that goes on uh, with being American that has to do with, you know, more for me, more for me, more for me. Right. Um, let me see how much I can get. Not how much can I, um, get out of this because I can only get something if I, if I take it from another person. I can only live happily and comfortably on this planet if I take some resource from someone else or if I harm the planet by making it warmer. <laughs> it's all the same story. It's just the same samsara going back around again and it's meant to make guilty um the lesson to be taught and the lesson to be learned here is that god's child is guiltless completely incapable of guilt and we are all god's child so if you think there's some bad players out there recently what i saw going around the memes it's uh the rockefeller guy funny memes i love the meme um he actually does look like that fucking guy i forgot his name it's homer's boss um from what's the show called with homer and marge and all those guys their cartoons are little yellow oh they're the simpsons so homer's boss there's a car cartoon with homer's boss you know he's just all greedy he plays a total greedy character where he just wants to work people to the bone he's very money hungry well so they're doing a meme and they're showing like that guy homer's boss um as you know, he looks like this Rockefeller guy who basically has all the money and you guys are all pet it, peasants and all that kind of stuff. So he, if he's the guy of the day to hate upon, then for you who are interested in, in awakening, he is the guy of your day to allow all kinds of compassion for. 
um, if he's receiving all that hatred in your mind, you can also use your perception of him to be the recipient of your compassion, um, uh, of the compassion that's natural for you. He is doing everyone a favor, just like anyone else. He is doing everyone a favor. He is giving, doing everyone a good, a, a, a good deed, a blessing, something that, oh, Mr. Wither, Mr. Withers, thanks, I got a name for the dude. Mr. Withers, he's the same as the, whoever the Rockefeller guy is alive right now. Um, apparently alive right now. <laughs> um, that's the guy. Um, so that's a call for compassion um, to Mr. Withers and the guy who's just like Mr. Withers. Okay, so I'm getting a low battery in my Mac right now. Um, I can get a I can get a charger and plug it in um, if there's more being called just be share with shared with you guys. Raise your hand, ask a question if you're interested in uh, me sharing something else. Otherwise, I'll pause a moment and see if anything else arises. Anne, do you have a question? Often, oftentimes, this is fun because Anne has these good questions and she comes up with them off after the fact. Oh, by the way, if my Mac runs out of batteries and I go off, just know that I love you, okay? Do you have a question? You don't have to be fast about it. Just chill out. Oftentimes, Ann will come out up with this question after the fact. We're all done with the show. I'm like, ah, oh, fun show. Ann will go and be like, dang, Ann, that's a good question. <laughs> so uh, if something like that arises, let me know. I always don't mind after the fact either. That's fine with me. Hmm. I do have to pee. I noticed that. So I don't see any hands and uh, I don't see any more going on. So I'm going to call that a wrap. I think we covered a lot today. Um, I'm super grateful for all of you. Thank you so much for being with me. Um, I appreciate you so much. I love you. And um, yeah, until next week, check out, if you want to check out miraclebotanicals.com, I've got three essential oils right here that, um, popped out for today. I was feeling very floral today, neroli. That's one of my favorites. Um, always love neroli. Um, Cape chamomile, such sweet floral, sweet, powerful feminine. Um, apparently I'm getting like this feminine kind energy going today because I'm super floral. Magnolia flower. The magnolia flower is a trip because when you smell it out of the bottle, it's like so intense it's so strong and so intense and sometimes people are like oh i don't even like that but then if you take a little drop of it and you just like put a little drop a little dab such a small amount will do yeah so intense intensely floral and it just kind of comes off of this as this beautiful people just like oh so beautiful i get compliments all the time how good i smell you guys and and the thing is everything everything that i carry it's it's all a natural thing so it's not like it's to add any chemicals to it we do chemical analysis we get chemical analysis on everything so it's like it's all chemically sound too not to mention the energy we're always giving all kinds of love to our essential oils we call them infused with love um because uh, because we when we're around the essential oils and we're working with the essential oils and even all the time especially for me um because i know the essential oils are really close to me um and you know i'll be aware of how my energy is affecting the essential oils and also how it's affecting all the people who are receiving the essential oils and also how it's affecting my friends you know um the energy that i'm allowing for myself so that really inspires me to keep allowing more bliss and relaxation for myself because i know that it ripples outward to each of you and allow it allows more of that for all of my friends and i love you so much um do you want to check out our essential oils 
That is miraclebotanicals.com. If you're looking for more recordings, my in-person ones go to hopejohnson.org. That's where they're filed. Um, also, the, uh, the online ones are accessible from there as well. They're also on YouTube. Um, I also accept donations on my site. I do offer one-on-one -on -one if anyone's interested in that. Um, and I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much. Everyone have a beautiful week. And until next time, mahalo, aloha, and ahui ho. Ow!